All right, welcome to this video. This video is going to be about uh, drawing free body diagrams, and I'm just going to get started with the basics here. So this is not an advanced video by any means, but this is just a way to begin to understand how do we create this setup for a free body diagram. Okay, so a free body diagram is a way that we represent all of the forces acting on an object. And most of the time, if we're dealing with basic physics, we're going to represent the mass with a a little dot which is the center of mass. So we're going to pretend like all of the forces act on that point. In reality though that's not true. Uh, we know that all of the forces do not act at one point. In fact they act at all different points throughout the system. Uh, but we're going to simplify this here. So uh, I'm going to go through the rules here. There's just some rules that I've given. So uh, number one you need to define a po your positive axes. So what does that mean? That means that you need to show which direction you're going to make as your positive y and which direction you're going to make as your positive x. Okay, So that's the first thing you need to do. It's very important uh, when we're dealing with um, Newton's second law, when we're going to have to deal with a net force, we need to define a direction. So does it really matter which direction you make your axes? Uh, it, it does matter, it does, uh, and especially when you get into problems like inclined planes or pendulums or different types of situations, it really matters how you define it. And you're basically trying to, to define your positive axes in the way that makes the problem the easiest to understand. Okay, so step number two, you need to draw a box in the middle, draw a box with a dot in the middle for the center of mass. So here's a box here, let's represent this is some mass and it's, it's in the air. Uh, this is not on the ground, okay? And um, I just have a box and there's a dot here in the middle, okay? And that's the center of mass. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is on the bottom right corner of your free body diagram, I want you to write the mass. So if your mass is 10 kilograms, write it there in the bottom right corner, just so we can always see it. So that's important because we want to see what that mass is. Next one is draw an arrow to represent each force. It should pass through the center of mass and the tail should align with the center of mass. So for example if I have a force like this I don't want it with the, the head at the center of mass, I want it with the tail right at the center of mass. So ideally the size of the arrow, arrow should be proportional to the force. So if the force is greater than another force it should be longer, the, the, this should be longer. Uh, represent the force with a capital letter F and the type of the force with the lowercase subscript right here. Okay, So that's important. We talked about this before um, when we were talking about how do you name the forces. So again, we define our axes. We draw a box with a dot in the middle and the box is the center of mass. We're going to write the mass in the bottom right corner and we're going to draw an arrow to represent the force and we want the tail to align through that center of mass. And then we're going to label the force with a capital letter and a lowercase. So let's just say that this is a situation here let me zoom out a little bit here. We have a mass, it's in the air, okay, and it's falling. Let's just pretend like this is the ground down here. So <clears throat> this this object is moving, it's falling, and, the, and there's only one force acting on it right now, it's the force of gravity. So if this object was in the air, no matter what it's doing in the air, even if it's moving down or if it's moving up, or if it's if it's moving up and then it stops and it's moving down, the only force acting on this is going to be gravity, Fg, okay? So that's just how projectiles work or free fall motion. If something's in the air, there's just gravity acting on it. And we know that this is a field force, right? So it doesn't matter where it is, gravity's going to affect it. But eventually this object will hit the ground, okay? And at some point it will hit the ground and it will settle down. So right when it hits the ground, it's going to have a reaction force that's going to be that's going to be pretty large. In fact, right when it hits, there's going to be a force that's going to be much larger than this gravity because it has to stop it. It has to basically take that motion and stop it over some short period of time. And so um, for some instant, when it hits the ground here, you're going to have a very large force in the opposite direction because it's slowing it down. But over time, after it rests on that surface, what's going to happen is there's going to be a force that's going to be exactly proportional to that and opposite of it like this. Okay. So notice I made them the same size, right? and it's going to be proportional to it and opposite of that. Okay, And that force is the reaction of whatever this object is pushing down on the ground. And so this, this force right here actually has a name, it's the normal force. 
And uh, what it is, is it's, like I said, it's a reaction force against the ground. This object's on the ground. And whatever this object pushes onto the ground, it's going to push back up. So it's a reaction to this object. It's not a reaction to gravity. It's just whatever I'm pushing on the ground, it's going to push back. Okay? So they're equal and opposite. Okay? So um, I could give you another example here. Let's just say that I had, um, let's just say that I was pushing down on this box now. I'm going to do it a different color. Uh, let me make this blue, and I'm, I'm I'm pushing down here with something different. I'm going to call this force here. This is going to be my force applied. So let's say that somebody comes onto this box, okay, like this, and they push down upon it. They're going to push down on that box, and with their hand, okay. So let's say that somebody pushes down on this box with his hand. So what's going to happen is the ground's going to push back with that same amount. So the normal force now this force is pushing up, if I move it over here, I could make it exactly proportional to these two forces pushing down, and now the normal force goes all the way up there, right, because I'm pushing down on it. So you can see clearly that the normal force has nothing to do with gravity. It's just whatever is pushing down on the ground, it's pushing back. So, you know, um, again, if I'm just applying some force applied to the top here, if I'm pushing down with my hand, that's the blue force, in addition to the gravity, the normal is going to grow also to it. So the normal is just going to um, go equal and opposite to that. And the name of the normal, it gets its name because it's perpendicular to the surface. So technically, like I said, all of these forces are not through the center of mass. That normal force is actually coming from the surface like this, okay? And does that make sense? And the force applied, if I was pushing it with my hand, right, it would actually be up here, right? If I took my hand with a force applied, I would actually push it from the top down, and then gravity is also pushing down. So the normal is just going to push back up to whatever is being pushed down on the ground onto it. Okay, so that's just important to note. So, but we can line these vectors up, right? Because there's a, there's something called a line of action for a vector. So the line of action is just this line that all of these vectors are acting on. And so they're all along this same dotted line here. You can see it here. I'm just kind of moving them on top of each other here, right? There's this dotted line. So what we can do with a line of action is we can slide the vectors up and down. It doesn't really matter. So I'm drawing this force applied here. And again, it's we're acting as if it's acting just on this center of mass. But I can put it down here if I want. I can slide it down. Um, and again, I just want to start with that first force with the tail on that. And then again, the normal force, we could slide up here, acting at the center of mass, just like that, right? So you can see clearly that um, we can slide these vectors just to make it, rep make it more organized to represent the forces as being equal and opposite here. But in reality, they're not necessarily at all acting at that center of mass. So I hope that's clear about how that works, okay? So that's it for this video. This was just an introduction into free body diagrams and how to represent your forces uh, and create your, uh, your box with your center mass and showing your mass in the bottom right corner. So check back next for the video on free body diagrams using Newton's second law. Thanks for watching.